wage slavery, renting yourself to an owner, was not very different from chattel slavery, uh, what, you know, what they were fighting civil war about. And you have to recall that by the in the mid 19th century, that was a common view in the United States. Mm -hmm. For example, it was the position of the Republican Party. It was Abraham Lincoln's position. It's not an odd view, mm -hmm. but there isn't much difference between selling yourself and renting yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, so the idea of renting yourself, meaning working for wages, was degrading. Uh, you couldn't. It was just an attack on your personal integrity. Uh, the uh, uh, and they despised the uh, industrial system that was developing, that was destroying their culture, destroying their independence, their individuality, uh, constraining them to be subordinate to masters. Uh, losing, the, the, there was a tradition of what was called republicanism in the United States. We're free people, you know, the first free people in the world. This was destroying and undermining that freedom. And this was the core of the labor movement all over, yeah. uh, and included in it was the assumption, just taken for granted, that those, I'm quoting, those who work in the mills should run them. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, one of their main slogans, I'll just quote it, was, uh, uh, they condemned what they called the new spirit of the age, uh, gain wealth forgetting all but self. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That idea that yeah. you should, the new spirit, that you should only be interested in gaining wealth and forgetting about your relations to other people, they regarded as just a, a violation of fundamental human nature. Well, the, the core of the anarchist, core of the anarchist tradition, as I understand it, uh, is that power is always illegitimate unless it proves itself to be legitimate. Mm -hmm. So the burden of proof is always on those who claim that some authoritarian hierarchic uh, relation is legitimate. Mm -hmm. If they can't prove it, mm -hmm. then it should be dismantled. Can you ever prove it? Well, it's a heavy burden of proof to bear, but I think sometimes you can bear it. But the question that always should be asked uppermost in our mind is, why should I accept it? Uh, it's the responsibility of those who exercise power mm -hmm. to show that somehow it's legitimate. It's not the responsibility of anyone else to show that it's illegitimate. It's illegitimate by assumption. Mm -hmm. uh, if uh, it's a relation of authority among human beings, which places some above others, and that's illegitimate by assumption. Mm -hmm. Unless you can give a strong argument to uh, show that it's right, you've lost. It's kind of like the use of violence, mm -hmm. uh, say, in international affairs. There's a very heavy burden of proof to be borne by anyone who calls for violence. Maybe it can be sometimes justified. Personally, I'm not a committed pacifist, so I think that, yes, it can sometimes be justified. So I thought, in fact, in that article I wrote in 10th, 4th grade, I thought the West should be using force mm -hmm. to try to stop fascism. States is, is a uh, is sort of out of the world on this topic. Mm -hmm. uh, Britain is to a limited extent, but the United States is like on Mars. So here, the term libertarian means the opposite of what it always meant in history. Uh, libertarian throughout modern European history meant socialist and anarchist. It meant the anti. I mean, the socialist movement, the workers' movement, and the socialist movement, it sort of broke into two branches, roughly. One statist, one anti-statist. Uh, the statist branch led to Bolshevism and uh, Lenin and Trotsky and so on. The anti-statist branch, which included Marxists, left Marxists. Uh, Panico, Rosa Luxemburg, others, uh, it's kind of merged more or less into an amalgam with a big strain of anarchism uh, into what was called libertarian socialism. So libertarian in Europe always meant socialist. Here it means ultra, you know, Ayn Rand or mm -hmm. Cato Institute or something like that. But that's a special U.S. usage uh, having to do with the there are a lot of things quite special about the way the United States developed, and this is part of it. Uh, there it meant, and always meant to me, uh, a socialist, anti socialist, uh, anti state, the anti state branch of socialism, which meant 
a, a, a highly organized society, total, completely organized, nothing to do with chaos, uh, but uh, based on a democracy all the way through. That means democratic control of communities, of workplaces, of uh, um, uh, feder federal structures built on systems of voluntary association uh, spreading internationally. Uh, that's traditional anarchism.